Hi, I am Tavish Cardiff. It is our Raw Materials Emotion Week, and I have with me Ashlyn, who has graciously agreed to be our guest and talk about what she's going through right now. So, to set this up, Ashlyn's birthday is today. Happy birthday. Thank you. And she found herself with friends that had um, obligations that were couldn't, couldn't be avoided. Um, a guy that she's interested in that maybe said he wasn't interested in having a girlfriend, and then just um, some emotional realizations that came up during a healing session that we did last week. So that landed her on this couch for this conversation. We just had a lovely breakfast and now we're ready to dive in to your birthday and yes, how are you feeling? Uh, very mixed feelings. Like, <clears throat> I'm glad it's my birthday. Mostly I'm upset though. <laughs> like it's just, it's been a lot a lot um really glad that I've been doing some work with you though because I am learning that being able to feel your emotions is really important and I've realized that I haven't so it's my birthday today um I've been fighting my feelings of my emotions for a long time and spirit actually injured me <laughs> a couple weeks ago so I've had to really work let's say grounded. on myself Grounded. Spirit grounded me. He aggressively grounded me. My, yes. Ashlyn has been running, running, running from her emotions for 37 years. And at 38, uh, they finally said, nope, you're going to sit down and, and deal with some of this stuff. So, fortunately, I reached out to Tavish because I was losing my mind. I have so many big emotions and... Um, Emotions are scary and they're really hard to process, but they're also an integral part I'm learning of our light and who we are. So this is what, what four or five days into, <laughs> maybe a week into working on uh, making a choice to work with some emotions and yes. it's been rough. It's been rough, but it's also been very freeing. Like I've, there have been times when now I feel still without feeling heavy. And that's a big relief. Like that's a big step, but it is a conscious, like I have to be conscious of it. And learning to connect these dots. So <coughs> started last week uh, telling her about the first four pillars and she did her mentors list. She is a musician. Um, yes. <laughs> And so that pillar came really easily able to get into um, those connections. And she's always been very spiritual. Yeah. So easy to connect through that. And then um, looking at food and the mental structure, I think that's the one that really kind of got you in a way that you weren't expecting because you could see how your life has unfolded, your own yes. raw material. Yes. And I think you said when you showed up today that you feel raw. Yes. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's the name of this program. It's our raw stuff. It's what we came in and what we choose to do with the raw material we were given. So emotions take us from our passions. They keep us from the things that we might otherwise want to do. And they um, really are there as an indicator. They're there to show us what's going on, but we've become so afraid of them. Um, and, it, you know, you're kind of emotional traje trajectory is very similar to mine where early in my life I did not acknowledge or deal with emotions and so when they came up they were volatile and big and scary yes <laughs> so learning to take that step back pause and and just watch um, what your mind is doing what's going on and and how your body's reacting to it helps you learn whether you stop breathing you know all the things that that we do to stop ourselves in our tracks when we start to feel something. So uh, I just want to, first of all, kudos to you for opening yourself up to this, for being here to discuss it and, and really to just lay it all out there because like you said, it is freeing. Yeah, it is. It's, it's scary, but it is, it's, it's a relief and it's okay to feel that relief like it's okay to let go of these emotions I'm learning so it's, it's pretty cool so as she is 
getting comfortable with, with talking about these things, I think one place that we've arrived at is, you know, especially with regard to the romantic interest. <laughs> um, by the way, her homework, which I've never given to anyone, is no, no romantic entanglement. Uh, that just means don't be searching for the guy. Yes. Just don't be searching for the one. Uh, because in order to get to where you want to be, you need to spend some time with yourself. And I don't think you'll mind me saying that Ashlyn has spent a lot of her life reacting to someone that she met and then trying to fit the mold of what their life looks like or what they want because what they have seems exciting or interesting. And it never fails to disappoint you because you're trying to fit something that's not necessarily you or yours. So Ashlyn's uh, intentions right now center around pulling together uh, the things that she's passionate about and establishing a life that is hers with her things so that when she is ready to jump into a new relationship, um, she's bringing herself with her, not a moldable piece of Play-Doh that can become whatever you need. Right. I want to be whole. And, and I think working on being whole. And that's that's a big thing. One of the things I already whole. Yes. <laughs> One of the things is accepting your wholeness. That. I want you to hear that. Yeah. I am whole. You Accept whole. it. Yes. You are whole. <laughs> you are whole. Right now, in this moment, you are whole. And you always have been. You always have been. It's that ego that protects us that gets in there and tells us we're not safe or we're not whole or we're not enough. But the reality and the truth is every single thing that has happened to us, all of our trauma, all of our experience, all of our accolades, um, every one of them is, is integral to who we are and what we contribute in the world. So that focus on music for you, focus on spirit for anyone else, focus on connection and allowing some of those feelings that are so stuck in our body to find flight, to be able to, to take off from wherever they've been stuck in us. As a musician, you need your breath. Yes. <sighs> it's amazing how hard breathing is. <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about breathing and, and what you do with um, playing and singing. So, I mean, really just... I see the music, you know, and, and, and I feel it like when I, when I start playing and it's not always my music, you know, it's just, it's any music that I connect to that, that I feel like I need to play that has a meaning for me in that moment. And I can always recall that connection. And if there's a song I feel like I have to learn, it's something that actually grows with me. I'm, I'm learning like like it takes on different meanings and it's still just as important um, to my to my spirit and, and to my music and to my sound. So I think music is something that you've always used to intellectualize your emotions. Yes. Right? It's, I'm sad when I listen to sad music yes. and then... It helps that, me process and... But it doesn't clear your body. Yeah. Because it's... Uh, as an empath, you are pulling in someone else's emotions. You're clearing emotions for other people yes. rather than going and finding the places where you've hidden them in your own body. And I would imagine that as you keep going through this and clearing your own space, you know, physical space, you find your voice improving. You find your yes. musical ability improving. Um, and the more you get in touch with those things that you're passionate about, the more these emotions become easy to handle even though they're hard. So let's talk trauma, but let's just go back to the earliest age you can think of where you weren't getting emotional needs met or physical. I mean, that's pretty early. It was like, I don't recall really ever having like real friends as a kid. Um, my dad, was an alcoholic and um, he was a good he was a good man like he wasn't abusive to at least to me 
Um, you know, he rarely said negative things or that kind of stuff, but he maybe wasn't necessarily present, but I'm from a really small town. So living in a home with an alcoholic that's actually not a bad human was really hard for a lot of other people to accept. And I remember, I'll always remember this. I had this girl that was my friend, um, and we could play. Uh, but her mom was a, a gossiper and she said something in the church once and um, I was no longer allowed to go in their house. She was my closest friend that would actually talk to me in front of other people. Um, most people I knew didn't talk to me in front of other people. So there would be one of the first times you can remember throwing a suit of armor on yeah. and having to stick a smile on your face and pretend like this didn't hurt you. Yeah. And act like it was fine and go on and I would imagine that you've done that over and over mm -hmm. and set me it makes me a little emotional to to think about it um I mean if I many... really think about all the way back there was this kid that wouldn't let me on the slide because I was too small and I was ugly and he threw me off but then I got kicked out of school because I got back up on the slide and I threw him off the top <laughs> well a little bit a little bit little... trauma and anger up there so from an early age, you learn to avoid emotion and to sidestep it, stick it somewhere in your body. And as long as I've known you, it's been a, a long time. We know mm -hmm. each other through disc golf. So probably 12 years now. Probably something like that. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that is a, a testament to why you're sitting here, too, because disc golfers have some inherent trust with each other and... You know, when you're when you are talking to another disc golfer, generally you're looking at someone who sees the world as more connected. So it's easier to feel comfortable sharing how you feel, opening up about trauma, um, and because we walk around more connected, we walk around in disc golf on our courses connected to the earth. Yes. And That's why I started playing. <laughs> and so I've known you to always be very active very you know even on the course just walking you're dancing or you're yes. moving or you're you're doing something and it's a very positive quality but it also is you can see you running within yourself from feelings um, so I think this hurting your ankle finding yourself grounded and the space that you've come in six days to just being willing to turn around and look at how far you've come and to see yourself uh, not not just struggle with these issues, but also figure out where you can let them go and where you can connect the dots and and instead of blaming the person who did the thing, um, start looking at what you gained from it. So back to the question of the person that you may or may not be interested in, and time will tell, right? Right. But the question that this comes down to once you really are honest with your emotions is, are you interested in this person? Let's look up here. Are you interested in this person because they rejected you and said they might not want you? Or are you interested because that is actually a person you want to be with? And I know from talking to you, you don't actually know the answer to that question. Right. You're right. You're right. She's right. She's always right. Well, I, 90, 95. About other, people's, <laughs> about other people's lives, I have a really good track record. <laughs> but that's that's the thing about emotion. If you spend too much time there, you start believing your own emotional reactions and you start thinking that that's reality. And we're asking ourselves to continue to overlook our own original issue with not being able to handle how we feel. Instead, we want the environment to change for us so that we don't have this crazy reaction or feeling. Um, because, it, because it's been bottled up to the point where it's just loud and big and you can't even identify the feeling. Mm -hmm. So you came in, you're the first person, and I, I'm not telling you this, um, I'm telling you this for the first time right now, I haven't told you this, but you're the first person I've had that's cried practically through the entire session. <laughs> I mean, I have people <laughs> cry, but this was forward to backward, uh. and some of it was happy you laughed during it you I mean but it was all just this very yes. emotional release and I think that at the end of that you had released so much that you just said okay I'm ready I'm I'm ready now and you did this um, checked in with your ego you checked in with your soul 
and your soul really kind of cleared it and cleared the way and said, let's do the work. Yeah. <laughs> so here you are ready to do the work and we don't know what it looks like, but it's your birthday. You got <laughs> a full day ahead of you and, um, and you've spilled your guts a little bit about some really challenging things. We scratch the surface on trauma, but the details of that are personal and they get shared with who you choose to share them with. But really going into those little parts of yourself that protects the trauma and telling that little girl, hey, I'm okay now. I'm 38, I can handle it, I can, you can go. Um, and just touching on each of those instances and letting them go. That, you know, the girl that got kicked off the slide for being ugly, you know, she's gorgeous. And the girl that went back and threw him off, you know, <laughs> she's mad. She doesn't have to be mad. You know, you're out on the beach building your own castle. And whatever it turns into with the waves and the wind and the, and the stuff is going to be what it's going to be. But it's going to be perfect and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be hard. It's going to be good. It's, it's going to be all the things. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and the key is that you're ready for it and you're open yes. to it. Yes. I also want to add, and you can take this out if you want, that, you know, last week you went and saw someone, so you have a medical option here too. Yeah. And I mean, she's questioning the level of her own sanity yeah. and ability to hold her thoughts together. And so there's a question looming about whether you're going to go a medication route and, mm -hmm. and what you're going to do. And again, it's all remains to be seen. So getting Ashlyn into the best space to support whatever decision she makes for herself uh, I think is is uh, really important and admirable. And I keep trying to find people to fix the problem. Like I went to the doctor, I wanted blood work, I wanted my hormones checked, I wanted my vitamins checked, I wanted all of these things. And he was like, we, we didn't really do that, but like I can give you an antidepressant and an off button. There's so many things that connect to the things that make us upset and the things that bother us and the things that make us feel like we can't handle our feelings. Yes. And when we think that our brain can't handle our feelings, then we run into, do I need medication? And I don't know whether you do or not. I'm not a doctor. Right. But again, I want to give you the space to really explore it and to know, you know, to make it, to make an informed choice. So I don't have, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. I just want you to be able to do what's best for you. Um, I'm not against it. Right. And, I, the, and But the only person that knows that is me. But I have to give myself a chance. And you're, you're doing that. You've opened yourself up. You've got this kind of new way of thinking and approaching things. And it doesn't change anything that's happened. Mm -hmm. But it allows you to explore it creatively. Yes. And to see all the things that you had kind of piled into a shame corner, you know, get them out yeah. and look at them. Are they really shameful? Or is there some value there? Yeah. So what are you going to do with the rest of your birthday? Oh, I want to go swimming and dress up, and I'm going to go sing some music somewhere. Sounds perfect. <laughs> all right. Yes. Well, thank you for thank having you. this conversation. And I will be back next week when we talk about listening. I might go see... Or hear Ashland play some music. Yay. <laughs>